So one of my most important projects for me was I went to Northern Ireland and built a temple in Derry. Derry is uh, in, in the north, and it's where most of the troubles occurred. Uh, Bloody Sunday happened in, in Northern Ireland, in Derry. I was invited by an organization called Artichoke. And the first time they invited me over, we f searched out a couple locations. And then they canceled the project because they didn't have any funding. And Helen Marriage called me over in London and said, I really wanted it to happen, and she started crying. And I thought, that was one of my techniques. You know? <laughs> uh, a year later, she called me and said, we have the money. I want you to come to Derry and build a temple. We developed a team in America. I had 20 people, 25 people. I had interviewed uh, 60 people in Derry and selected a crew of 20. I hired four Irish carpenters who had to have been unemployed for six months to work with us. That was kind of to keep it a little bit politically correct. We rented a warehouse. I found a site that I liked, and it was a contested site, which means that the Protestants wanted it, the Catholics wanted it, and they were going to fight over it. So it was in a Catholic neighborhood. And that was where I wanted to build the project. So this sounds like a joke. A Catholic priest and a Protestant minister came up to me. <laughs> and uh, they said, this is the wrong place to build it. This is a bad neighborhood. You'll have troubles and no one wants to go there. Why don't you build it down at this beautiful park? And I said to the Catholic priest, you don't send a blank to a park. You go where the people need help. Well, that was the end of the conversation with him. I had used several words that I shouldn't have used. Um, so he went on to put in the paper that I was, uh, it was a satanic project and that I was a pagan. Well, I didn't particularly want to be a satanic person, but I didn't mind the pagan thing. I thought, that's not a bad label. I mean, I've had bad reviews and that was a good one, you know. Uh, so the population of Derry is somewhere around 80-something thousand. 68,000 people came to the temple in Northern Ireland. Uh, the reason it was an important project is no one knew who I was. No one had any idea what Burning Man was or what glow sticks were. <laughs> it was the Irish people coming to forgive and to address some of their losses. And the town of Derry has one suicide a day. So it was a remarkable experience for me and my crew and the Irish people. When I was six years old, my mother remarried my father. And he was an artist and he took me to the Art Institute. That was when I decided to become an artist. So. I've never wanted to do anything else but make art. I'm an artist, I make art. My wife told me to stand here and say, you're an artist and you make art. <laughs> so that's the truth, that's what I do. Um, I love my work, I take it in the bathtub with me. You know, uh, not everything I do is good, but I always thought it was good. Uh, <laughs> I think it's really important to enjoy your work and love it. I do. I started building temples by accident. A young man I was working with was killed on a motorcycle. And I had been going into the garbage cans of a toy factory and I found this scrap wood. And I thought, well, I'd make something in the desert. Well, when Michael Heflin was killed on a motorcycle, at the cemetery, at the grave, his friends who had never had death said, well, Michael would have wanted us to go to the desert and build something. So when we went there, we built something. I had no intention of making a temple or a sacred space. It was just some plywood scrap. Well, maybe 50 people came and put names of people that they had lost in it. And we very unceremoniously lit it 
because Burning Man was about fire. And it was it. I was asked to build the temple again, and I thought, what would I dedicate a temple to? I'm not a Catholic or a Jew or a Buddhist. And I thought, well, if you're a Jew and you've taken your life, you can't be buried in a cemetery. If you're a Catholic, you can't be buried in a cemetery. And I thought, Burning Man embraces and understands things that most cultures don't. And I thought, all right, the center of the temple will be dedicated to that. Well, that year, 500 people put names in the center and 10,000 people put names on the outside. The next year, I was going to do a comedy club. <laughs> so um, when I changed the name of the temple, people still came and grieved and mourned and reflect, reflected on their losses, but they told jokes. So somebody in this room has just finished with somebody that's been in the hospital with cancer, and you know that they put up a poster in the hospital room, you know, with everybody writing, Dear Grandpa, I hope you're okay, or cartoon. And here was a cartoon of a man laying in his bed saying, this food tastes like cat blank. <laughs> they brought their favorite jokes as well as their grief. With this... What we're going through in our county, you know, I've recently talked to a woman who's, or I'm talking with a woman who's lost both her sons to suicide. And it's an incredible gift that she's been given. If you can imagine getting that as a gift. And if she takes that loss and make something beautiful out of it, like a painting, or a piece of sculpture, or a park, or music, then it's really using that awful gift that she's been given. And not everything that we were given is good, but it's all a gift if we make something out of it. If we waste it, if we waste that person's life, God, if we waste your lost homes, don't. Make something out of that loss. Make a park. You know, make, make a community center. Or make your grandson a toy. Or make sculpture or painting. But don't let anything that you're given go to waste. You know, use everything. Use the loss. It's easy for me to say. But I know that it works. I know that if you make something out of your grief you'll get healed. It's just a fact. I've seen it. Well, this, this, this is a man, I'm probably not going to say it. This is one of the builders in Ireland. David. David, I'm not going to work with you. So you can imagine what he said to me. He would yell at me. And he was thick as a brick, but the most wonderful builder and lovely man. <laughs> Don't go on there. I'm not going to work with you. Uh, we had, when I worked with a team, I worked with, I started my first temple with 20 people. The last project, I worked with something like 120 people. Uh, I worked with a project in Detroit with a young kid. And he had been working with me for a week. And I make people work. I work, and anybody that's with me works. And after that week, he said, this is the most wonderful week of my life. Now, I've had so many wonderful weeks, so many wonderful weeks. And what people need and want is to work. They want to create. They want to have some satisfaction. There's enough food in our society what they don't have, what people don't have, is that pride and that accomplishment that comes from hard work. And I come from a working background. And I love working. I want a 1,000 people. I want to build something with a 1,000 people. That's what we have is we have a surplus of people in our society right now. There's people on the street. There's homeless people. You know, there's people walking around who are displaced because they're 50 years old and the computers have wiped out their job. Those people are the material that we can make something out of. Uh, I've made a lot of art, 
But I think the most exciting thing is collaborating with people. I've, I've done, it's, it's what I do best. I stopped making commercial art 18 years ago. I only make priceless work now. You can't buy my work. It's not for sale. It's priceless. And it's, I think, in a society that's going so crazy with money, we have to get backwards. We have to stop it. This was dairy. Like I said, they didn't know anything about anything except to forgive. Uh, that's what I'd like. That's the most thing I'd like to say is don't waste your loss. Please celebrate your life. Celebrate that son that's gone, that mother or your brother or your best friend. You know, there's no shame in it. There's no shame in someone taking their life. There's no shame in a lot of the things that our society has put on us. Give them hell. Thank you very much. <laughs>